Hey everybody, this is the Not-So-Civil Engineer and the first thing I would like to do is say welcome to all the new subscribers that I have to my channel. I was recently shouted out in a lockpicking lawyer video with Deviant uh, where they showcase the underdoor tool and Deviant mentioned that I had some interesting upgrades and modifications to my own personal uh, underdoor tool which is uh, video 32. So a bunch of people came from Lockpicking Lawyer's channel to check out that video and to those of you that uh, thought my content was interesting and subscribed to stick around, thank you so much. So what I've got for you today is a video which was inspired by an attack that uh, I performed out in the wild. So tubular locks tend to get a bad rep just because items like the uh, Clom tubular impressioning set can be bought on Amazon for 30 bucks and the lockpicking community I feel has this idea that once you buy something like this basically every single one of these locks becomes trivial and that's not really the case um, sometimes you get tubular locks that are just fussy or they actually have such bad tolerances that you can't impression them no matter how many of these bands that you put on or how much you grease the tool or anything and you just keep going you keep going you keep rotating and you just get nothing right um, so I ran across a, a tubular lock in the wild that I needed to open, uh, and I tried my Clom set, and I got nothing. I tried, I tried, you know, multiple bands, uh, I tried one or two bands, I tried each and every single configuration a hundred different times, and I just couldn't get an open. So what I have for you today is I'm going to go through uh, an attack process by which we can decode uh, and duplicate the key for a tubular lock that does use an impressioning tool, however, we're not using the impressioning tool to get it open. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to pick this lock. Uh, I'm going to use a Sparrow's comb pick that has the tubular tensioning piece on it, and then also a Peterson knife. Um, we are not going to pick this lock uh, with the intent of opening it, per se. We are just picking the lock with the intent of getting all the pins to the shear line and getting the lock in a state where it is between uh, locking points. So um, really picking these kinds of locks I wouldn't say is a great method of attacking them just because you have to you have to go around so many times um, because they lock at every seven seventh points right because if there's if there's seven pins or eight pins they lock every time the pin stacks align. Um, so really picking these locks as a method of attack I would not say is very very expedient or good um, just based on the fact that these locks sometimes need to turn a bunch of times in order to open the specific one that I opened <laughs> it uh, it required nine full 360 degree rotations um, because it was actually the, the end of the cam was a, a screw and so the lock was literally screwing shut a uh, an enclosure um, and the screw had to rotate nine times in order to be fully seated so that would have required for a seven pin lock that would have required a uh, what is that 42 picks to open it um, so that's certainly not something which would be done in the real world um, but as far as picking these locks there's not much to it just kind of have to keep going around in the circle poking at all the pins seeing what shakes loose um, sometimes they can give you trouble just because they might have poor tolerances um, and those poor tolerances might trip you up a little bit this lock is pretty gritty and grimy so I have to use pretty heavy tension and I also have to uh, push the pins pretty hard so that causes some of them to overset pretty easily but it's just a matter of being diligent keep going around that circle eventually you should open the lock so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to release a little bit of tension because I feel like I overset these pins um, that was two, nothing on three a little click out of four, nothing on five a little click out of six seven was really gritty I had to really push on him alright a little movement on the core when I touch one Nothing on two, nothing on three, nothing on four. We'll click on five, nothing on six, and we're seven. Uh, there he is. Nothing on him. All right, so like I said, just keep keep moving, keep moving. 
Uh, keep pushing on these pins. Hopefully, eventually, something will pop the lock. Um, I haven't rehearsed picking this lock, so I really honestly don't know what the binding order is, and I didn't spend the time just because usually you don't you don't need to practice these kinds of locks, but uh, sometimes when they are grimy like this, they can cause issue. Uh, there we go. So we got an open. So that's the first step. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to use our tubular impressioning tool. We're going to zero it out. And we're going to make sure we have uh, only a couple of bands on here, just enough to keep the uh, little prongs in plane. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take it and push down on the lock. This is going to give us the direct bidding of the key, hopefully. And there you can see we've impressioned the key. Okay, now that we have the bidding on our uh, impressioned tool, what we can then do is take a decoder such as this one, um, or you can take calipers and measure all of the slots individually. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. We're just going to start if you can see the indexing pin right there, we're going to go around clockwise and we're going to start at the one position uh, up in the top corner. So we would basically all we do is we just take this gauge, put the thing, uh, put the impressioning tool flat and then just see which of these uh, it line, these little bumps and ridges it lines up to. These bumps are all corresponding to a number and that will be the bidding of the key. So I'll just go through the series. The first one looks like a two. The next one's pretty tall. Um, it's not quite a five, but it does fit a six. The next one looks like a five. Yeah, it's a five. Uh, the next is a five. This next one is pretty short. That might be a two or, oh, that's a three actually. Um, all right, so this next one is pretty low. Now that might be a one, but it also might be a zero. A zero is technically possible. I've seen it on some keys. Uh, and so in an instance where you're unsure, start with the lower value. That way when you're cutting your key, you can always go up. So we're going to call that a zero. And this next one, that also looks like a five. So if I remember correctly, that gives us two, six, let's start from the beginning, two, six, five, five, three, zero or one, and then five. So we're going to cut our first key to two, six, five, five, three, zero, five. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to either A, cut a key or have a key cut for us. We know our bidding code is 2655305. Uh, we determine that using our tubular impressioning tool. And so what we are going to do now is uh, I'm going to cut a key. If you don't have a hurdy-gurdy, which is this guy, if you don't have one of these, which I know a lot of people don't, what you can do is you can always just take the bidding code uh, to a hardware store that cuts keys, like a like a local Ace hardware store or something like that, uh, and ask them to cut the key according to your bidding code. In our case, we were unsure about the sixth position, whether it was a zero or a one. Uh, in that case, I would have both keys cut where you'd have 2655305 and 2655315. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our key blank right here, and we are going to cut that key. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is, I like to look at our common, our uh, bidding code and determine, um, and cut all the same bidding values. So I know that there's a lot of fives in this code, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut all the fives first. So I'm setting the combination, or the depth cut to five, and we have two, six, five, five, three, zero, five. So two, six, five, so we'll put the, we'll index the uh, nub on the three position. That is where our first number five cut is. And then I don't know the proper way for cutting these. I kind of just put it on the table with a little mat and just give it 10 or so spins. All right, so that was our first key cut. And you can see right there, that's our nice five position. And that was in the third position. We also have one in the fourth position. So we'll go ahead and cut that. All right, 10 spins later. Uh, and then we had three, zero, five. So we had a five in the seven position. We'll go ahead and cut that. Right. So we have all of our fives cut. Uh, we also have a six cut, so we'll cut that one next. Uh, that was two, six. So there we go. Six in the number two position. 
And like I said, I know a lot of people don't have hurdy-gurdies. Uh, I am lucky enough to have to know someone who does have one, and so I've borrowed it. Um, but you can just always have these keys cut. I know that uh, I bought these key blanks from an Ace Hardware store, and I think to have the keys cut to code would cost a three dollars or something like that per each. So for us, we only have two possible combinations, so that might cost you six bucks. So it's not not super expensive. Uh, and that's something that's pretty feasible to do. Uh, so right now I'm just cutting the first bidding position, which is that two. And then the last thing we have is a three. So we'll just change that guy to three. And then it was two, six, five, five, three in the fifth position. So we will index that there. And there we go. So hurdy gurdy out of the way. Get rid of these metal shavings. Ah, there we go. Here is our key, the key that we have cut. Uh, now remember we left a zero cut here because we weren't sure if that was a one or a zero. Uh, all the other ones are pretty straightforward. If you do end up having a bunch of biddings which are kind of questionable for you, that might result in a ton of combinations. So what I would consider doing is re-indexing your tubular impressioning tool. Go ahead and just flat it out on the table, and then before you reset your lock, go ahead and impression again. Do that as many times as possible so you can get the best idea of what you think the actual bidding of the uh, of the key is. So now that we have our key, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try it in the lock. And there we go, so it's a bit grimy, but let me pull this guy out of here actually. As you can see, pretty grimy, but it does, in fact, turn the lock. So, we were able to decode the uh, bidding combination with the, uh, via picking this lock and then using our tubular impressioning tool. So that is a different method for using these tubular impressioning tools in the event that you aren't able to get them to work off the bat. So, thank you all for watching. Have a great day.